Oh my god, that is even new! That might be my personal best walleye right there. Look at this pig. Look at that giant Look at that! What is up, the fisher people? So, if you have fished long enough and had enough fish on the line, you will have noticed by now you can get away with more things with littler fish than you can with big fish. The bigger fish have a way of exposing your mistakes. So, what I want to cover is how to tighten up some of those things to make sure that next time you're on the water, you get that fish in the boat a chance for a great photo op or maybe even this is backwards it's hard to do maybe even a trophy opportunity something to put on the wall and avoid the old sad selfie face so there's one thing you can take away from this video above all else it's basically that you need to be patient and you are not in control. That fish is in control, at least until it's tired. This is basically a war, basically a war of attrition until that fish says, I can't fight no more, and gives up, and you can get it in the net. So with that in mind, we're gonna cover basically two aspects. One is the fighting of the fish, and the other is the landing of the fish, or getting it in the net, getting it in the boat. So to start with, the fighting of the fish. Basically, your goal the whole time is to keep a constant pressure on that line, give or take. If you let your line go slack, first of all, the hook might hit you in the face. <laughs> Second of all, now you have room for that fish to shake that hook loose, right? So you have to keep tension on the line, but you can't keep too much tension on the line uh, because then you put more pressure than necessary and the hook might pop loose that way as well or even snap your line. So what you're trying to do is play that fish so that if they're running on you, you give some and when they let go, you reel up and take some. Does that make sense? It's a give and take sort of thing um, and you, you want to keep that medium tension. But if the fish starts running, do what you gotta do just to keep enough tension on, but let that fish take your rod down. And if that means letting your rod go in the water, there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes fish make long runs and playing that fish and giving him the room might mean dropping your rod all the way into the water. They can get wet, there's not a problem with that seems to be like this invisible barrier that nobody wants to let their rod tip go under the water, but it's fine. Feed that fish the line that it needs while keeping a good medium tension on the line. Now, of course, we can't have this discussion without talking about drag, right? So you need to make sure that you your drag's tight enough so that you can get a good hook set on the fish and get it in the boat but that if you give it a firm tug, a little bit of line will come off the spool so that if you aren't responsive enough to that fish and feeding it enough line when it's running, it'll literally pull line off the spool and have you know less chance of line snapping and hook popping loose. And so, you know, along the same lines with trying to keep that medium tension, you're responding to the fish, right? If the fish is running, let it run and feed it the line it needs. If When the fish rests, then that's when you start to reel and pull back a little bit and try to pull up line. So it's a give and take process. It's a bit of a tug of war. When they rest, you reel. And when they run, you give them their time. You give them their space, right? So that's a lot of relationships, doesn't it? Now I think, I think, uh, Probably 
where a lot of this, what I call horsing the fish, comes in or bullying the fish. I, I imagine it has to do with a lot of people watching bass fishing on TV. Because they're doing something very different. They're typically throwing 40 to 60 pound braided line in the heavy cover, weeds and trees and things like that. And they're trying, to, as soon as they feel that bite, they're setting the hook and they're ripping that fish out of cover and flipping it in the boat as fast as possible to not lose the fish. Well, that's typically not at all what we're doing with walleye fishing. There are very few instances where yes, you might fish for some walleye out of some timber, some sunken timber, or maybe you're throwing spinner baits, or maybe you got some slip bombers up in there. But that is the exception and not the rule. If you're jigging, if you're trolling spinners, if you're trolling crankbaits, whatever it is, um, you can't overpower and horse that fish. Um, we're typically using more responsive rods and like you can't even, see, you can barely see this line, this monofilament line, right? If this were super heavy braided line, this would be very obviously cutting right through my face right now. But we're using a more subtle approach for the walleye and because of that, there's a lot higher chance of losing the fish and breaking the line you put too much tension on it. Um, so, so here's another thought experiment, right? Let's imagine we're trolling crankbaits, okay? We're trolling probably at two mile an hour, and then the gear ratios on those reels are made such that every time you turn that crank, a lot of line comes up. So if you're reeling super, super fast, we're already going two mile an hour. Now maybe you're pulling the line at another two or three mile an hour, and now imagine the fish runs away from you and the fish can swim at, I don't know what speed, let's call it at least a few mile an hour, all of a sudden you have a lot of tension on that line. <laughs> and I know that the adrenaline's flowing and you're super excited to get that fish in the boat, but you gotta slow down, especially in those situations. You gotta think about how much tension you're putting on that line because you don't want it to break and you don't want the hook to shake loose. So here's a perfect example of my brother finding a couple of great walleyes up at Leech Lake this past year. Um, he does a great job of keeping that medium tension on the line. He does a great job of letting that fish take him where it has to go, even if that means his rod going underwater in the process. And then when the fish gives, he, he takes. Brett, this is huge. I don't know, this might be a big ass wall. I think it's a big, big wall. Because it's, really, it's not running? It's a big eye. There it is. It's a big, that's a big wall, I dude. That's what I was marking, that's what I was looking for. Ooh. One more dive. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that might be my personal best walleye right there. <laughs> Woo! All right. Look at that giant. Getting some video. Look at that giant. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This feels like 20 again. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> God, I love these walleyes. Welcome to Leech Lake, huh? Woo! Oh my God, that, that is even huge. Bigger. That one's even bigger. That's that's that upper 20s, Brandon. That's Look wow. at this pig. Oh my god, dude. He's going down again. That's this might long. be his last run, hopefully. This one's long. Come on, buddy. Come I think on. I get him hooked pretty good. You do? Judas. Wow. Look yeah. at that. <laughs> Brandon! Brandon! <laughs> Dude! <laughs> oh my goodness! Ow! That thing is massive! That one's way bigger. Okay, 
Okay, so now for landing the fish, right? You've got it all the way up to the boat. Um, and you're, the net person is in position. And this is, this is the moment, right? This is where you make it or break it. You either get the photo op or you don't, right? So the first thing you have to know is when you get it up near the surface, almost inevitably that fish is going to want to make a dive. So just plan for that. When they see daylight, they're going straight down. And they may do this two, three, four, five times depending on how much energy that fish has and how big and strong it is, okay? So just plan for that. And when they do, remember, when they take off and run, you need to keep medium pressure, but let them take you where they need to take you, okay? Second part about landing the fish in the boat, once they are maybe done making runs and you're getting it closer to the surface, you can't let it break the water. If that, the same way we're trying to keep this medium tension on all the time, it's hard to keep the screen. If you let the fish break the water, you're gonna lose a lot of that tension and it's gonna shake its head like crazy and probably throw the hooks on you. You can't let it break the water. Walleye are not jumping fish, like bass, pike, muskie, those fish like to jump when they get near the surface. Well, I don't, they want to go down, but if you let them break the water, they're just going to shake and get loose more often than not. So at that point, keep it right below the surface and wait until you get in a good position to take a shot with the net. The other thing you have to know is that you need to keep that fish away from any obstacles as much as possible. And I mean, the motor, the trolling motor, the underneath of the boat itself. Um, I don't know if fish instinctively know this or not, or if they're just looking to get under cover naturally, but typically when they make those runs, they'll also try to make them down underneath the boat or down into the motor. And many a fish has been lost from line abrasion against a prop bottom of the boat. So, okay, now you're thinking, well, I'm not supposed to horse the fish, right? I'm not supposed to put too much pressure on it, and I can't pull it around because I'm going to lose it. That's true. But what you can do, put the odds in your favor by keeping your line as far away from these things as possible while you're fighting the fish to reduce the chances of that happening, right? So, instead of, you know, holding your rod up in here and having that fish be really close to the side of the boat, if you're fighting the fish out here, it has a lot further to run to make it underneath the boat, so it might not be able to get there no matter how hard it tries. Same with the motor in the back or the trolling motor up on the bow. The, the more you can position yourself away from those things, it's less opportunity for that fish to get there, right? So put the odds in your favor and fight the fish away from the obstacles as much as possible because you can't pull them when they're running, but then they will have to run much further to get into trouble. And now finally, we get to the all important net job, right? So we know we don't want it to break the water. What are we looking for? We're looking for an opportunity where either the fish is just making a slow, very obvious move in a certain direction where the net person can take it from the front or the back, or ideally, you're waiting for that moment when the fish just gives up the old rollover, right? That is the perfect opportunity to net a good fish. Um, it also might help to work out a plan. Some people don't like to plan too much, but maybe some people do. Typically, and the person fighting the fish probably has the best feel for when that fish is ready. And the net person ought to wait until the cue of the person fighting the fish to say it's it's ready I'm ready take a shot at it when that fish rolls over or the next time you feel comfortable with it the other thing to notice by the way the way light refracts and bends through water when you stick that net in the water it is not down as far as you think it is there's been a lot of times where <laughs> myself included I've seen people think they're under the fish and they're not and bump it right in the nose and down it goes. Don't let that happen. Make sure you are far enough below that fish, farther than you think. Kind of like the way uh, the mirrors always say objects and mirrors are closer than they appear. 
similar concept. Make sure you get the net far enough underneath that fish so you don't lose it. So here again are a couple more examples of some net jobs with those fish that my brother and I were fortunate enough to catch at Leech Lake this past year to illustrate the point. Look yeah. at that. <laughs> Brandon! <Lake>. Brandon! Dude! <laughs> oh my goodness. Ow! That thing is massive. That one's way bigger. Jeez. Wow. 28? It might have you beat. I'm not. Oh, yeah. There is not a lot of give up in this. I'm gonna say 25 or 6. <laughs> oh boy. That's close. That's. How are there so many big fish this right spot, here? This spot, Brandon, I'm telling you. <laughs> Glad we came back for one more pass. Woo! So, yeah, there you go. Hopefully, with this video. Uh, it'll give you an idea for what to do next time you're in this situation to be prepared to fight that fish of a lifetime and get it in the boat, on the wall, as a replica, or at least a photo op. So that's what everybody wants, right? They want that photo op, they want that memory of that trip, not the sad selfie face. Look at that giant Look at that giant. That one's dirty. This is fat. That's a fat one. I love these leaf walleyes. Leaf Lake beauties here in Washington. Oh! <laughs> <laughs>